How's it going everyone? This is Wimbo. Today we are going to do another quick Blender tutorial talking about how to convert a logo into a 3D object. And you might see some videos out there on YouTube, but none of these are directly focusing on the typography and to really getting the authentic design directly from the Illustrator to the Blender. So this video is going to show you step by step. And as you may notice, I updated my logo and I'm actually find a professional logo designer to help me to rebrand my business and to do the upgrade logo based on what I want to achieve for my business strategy. In the upcoming videos, I'm going to show you the reasons why I decided to hire a professional logo designer to help me to redesign the logo and also what is the process looks like and how I think about the investment and why you need to consider to invest one based on your current business situation. Anyway, without further ado, let's get it started with our tutorial today. All right, everyone. Now you see we're inside of Illustrator. The reason why we need to start with Illustrator because most people are trying to convert a logo to a 3D object and they are started from an image. It works. However, if we're working with vector logos, then your results will be much smoother and is very accurate the exact way that designer did. If you are a freelancer out there, you're trying to recreating some logos, why don't you try to redraw the logos with Illustrator and then to going through this process with Blender to generating everything else. Because I know awesome logo designers are going to pay a lot of attention on the typography, every single stroke and the shapes, small rounded things is going to representing the way they are actually doing the work. So when you're doing the logo to convert it into 3D, you don't want losing all these details and all these intended design. So this is what we want to do. Anyway, this is the logo that we are going to convert it into 3D object. And I'm going to zoom in here. And one thing about the designer I work with, because he's absolutely pro, he's actually providing me a lot of potential growth and also opportunity for the future. So if I'm going to hit T, you can see here, this is actually a edible text. I can change it whatever I want. So I can do a CGI or something. It's just the, uh, it's actually some way to help me to think of bigger scale for my business strategy. For the purpose we wanted to use, we actually need to convert this text file into outline. So I'm not a really a designer, but I know how to do this because simply because I did research. So what I need to do here, I'm going to select the selection tool, click here and then go to the type. And then I'm going to outline creating outlines right, right here. Or you can do shift control O, whatever it works. And then suddenly this is actually converted to an outline rather than just a simple text, which means it's ready to go inside Blender. So next thing we're going to do here, we're going to select this logo. So I'm going to drag in here, Let's drag this box in here. Everything highlighted is being selected. I'm trying to only export this logo. So I'm going to right click and go to the export selection. And then what you need to do first is you need to change the format from PNG or any images to go to the SVG. And then we can select the areas that you want to export to. And then you're just going to export asset. Okay, do that. So then you export this logo design into SVG format. Now it's time to jump back to the Blender. Now we're inside Blender. We're going to go to the file and import goes SVG right here and we're going to do that. And then we're going to find the file and double click. You see the SVG and import SVG. Now you can see the way we are having here is a bunch of curves. If you do this type of thing inside of Photoshop or everything, it's not going to show you everything breaking down this way. If you go to the top view, zoom all the way in, all these curves being all loaded in. This is the very best way because if you're actually loading in something from Photoshop, this thing is not going to be smooth or is not the way the designer the created for this logo. So to import everything with SVG from Illustrator as a vector file, this is actually maintain all the details, all the designs as is supposed to be. So what we need to do next, we're going to select all the curves and you're definitely going to select one. 
first and then holding shift and click all everything else and then once we select that making sure you move your mouse cursor inside the viewport and hit Control j to join that now it becomes one single curve that we have okay and you notice the origin is all actually on the side of the corner so what we need to do here we're going to go to object and we're going to set origin to the geometry okay so we set it in here and holding shift s to kind of snap this selection to cursor now we're in the middle of this area okay next we are going to start working on this and to convert it to a 3d object okay so as you can see here we are actually working with a curve object we really need to convert this thing into a mesh object so we'll go to the side view and hit R, rotate it, holding control, and we are in the front view right now. And we are going to go to the curve setting, and they're 2D and 3D. So what we need to do next is very important. So if you go to the 2D, you see the resolution over here. Right now, we have kind of low resolutions. You see, it's supposed to be a very smooth curve. You can see that we have really low resolution. Based on my experiences, I, if I put 100, it's very smooth enough so sometimes you can just put 80 but it depends on what you want to do so this is actually what looks like inside a illustrator it's supposed to be super nice and smooth and all these sharp edges remain sharp so this is very important to bump up the resolution if you don't do so you are not having this beautiful curve or the design the way it is supposed to be so the next we are going to shift D to duplicate it and right click and snap it back and hit M key to creating a new collection and they're just saying the backup, okay? Back up and then put this thing into there so we can just temporarily disable that. Then we can work on this curve file. After we set up the resolution and we need to do to convert to mesh. So we're gonna go object and convert to mesh. Okay, watch what's going to happen of oh, this little icon. So it's going to change to the mesh icon. So go again, convert to mesh. Now it's kind of like triangle shape. That means it's become a mesh. So what you need to do next is we are going to creating some thickness of for this logo. Because right now this is two dimensions. It's one ultra thin sheet of layers. So we're going to go to the tab key to go to the edit mode. Hit A key to select everything and go to the side view and hit E and Y. Just kind of drag it a little bit. Just give it a little bit of thickness going on here and then click that. So now immediately you see we have a lot of vertices. I know, don't freak out because what we're actually working on right now is a logo. And I want to stress this enough is you don't need to add in subsurface modifier on anything, everything. As long as it's smooth, it looks nice, you don't have to work on this. And this is not going to be a, a photorealistic look compared to what we're doing for our product renders. This is just a logo. It's going to be fake. It's going to have a sharp, sharp looking on that 3D format. But if you really wanted to make it a special, you can even use sculpting to do different shape. But the purpose of this video is I'm trying to maintain every details from the 2D design to 3D design precisely, okay? So this is what we're gonna do. Next, we're gonna go to the shading tab. We're gonna start doing some setting over here, okay? So we're gonna come back in here, the front view. So we're gonna come here, front view, and we're gonna hit Z and having this Pi menu, I just gonna move this one, go to the render view. Right now, you see we have a HDRI image in here, but it haven't hooked in here. So what I will do here, I'm just gonna hold Alt and right click and just connect this. Now immediately you see what we're having here um, in this area. And because we have a HDR image in the background, and I'm just gonna go to my quick menu and enable the transparent to not see this. Now let's select the this logo, when you load in the SVG, you see here there's a mat. It has a default texture directly applied to it. So we don't want to do that. We're just going to hit X to delete it. And you can see this is kind of default look we have. And we can start actually texturing this 3D subject. And also before we do this, and if you notice, this 3D subject right now is having 
uh, all the same thickness. This is still something that you wanted to pay attention. When you want to make something looking good, you still need to think about the hierarchy. Although I know it's more like a design thing, but when you work in this, you want to see what is important and what kind of things you want to modify. And you can see here the digital creator. This is like the subtitle. It's not that big. It's supposed to be a little bit thinner. Right now, all the thickness are the same. So I'm going to separate these from the rest of the body and then work on it and make it a little bit thinner. And same thing for the W or the icon that um, we designed. We actually need to get in this in a different color. So the next thing we need to do is to separating all these parts in here. Okay. So what I'm just going to do, go to the Z and go to the solid mode. And now I'm going to start select this object, hit tab key and Alt Z, go to the X-ray mode. What I will do here, I'm just going to go to the side view to select the top one. And you see only the W and hit P to separate by selection. Okay, now you can see here, and I'm actually having another subject in here. Although it's called curve, but it's no longer a curve. So I'm just going to, this one is different subject right now. And then what I would do next, same thing, tab key and select all these bottom part and hit P to separate by selection. Okay. What I would do next, I just quickly name all these things and digital creator. I can hit F2 and just the digital creator DC. Okay. So that's one and I can just, or double click and hit W and, and this one just window. So that's just for the sake of like easy to navigate and organize file. The next I'm going to select a digital creator and come back and to set the object to origin to the geometry again. So then I go to the site view and I'm going to hit S Y. I'm just going to shrink it down, right? It's not supposed to be that long or thick. So that should be good for pretty nice hierarchy. And then what we need to do then is holding the Z and go to the render view and to see what we're having here. So what we can do next, I'm going to select the W. I'm going to adding a new materials. So in here, you can see this is just a basic principle BSDF. You can select the color accordingly. For the sake of this video, I just quickly pick a right color. You can definitely to refine the exact color using your branded color, but this is where you're going to go. And for the when goes out, I can just do another one. I can make sure that everything is pure white. And for the digital creator, we can just change to uh, another different color, maybe something kind of a gold-ish, and even change the roughness and making the metallic. Well, that's the whole idea is having this as a 3D object. You can do a whole lot of things with the things. The next part, I'm going to show you how I lighting this scenes because since I already made one, and that would be much easier, quicker to explain my process of how to light this. All right, guys, now I'm showing you the finished file. Actually, what is showing on the thumbnail of this video is you see there, this is the scene I built it. This is the background with the light generally in here. So I can, if I'm moving the light, you can see the tiny difference on the live side. And, and this is what we currently have. So we have a camera down here and our trusted logo down here and we also I did different textures with this uh, according to my brand color so I'm actually making this metallic material you can certainly play uh, with it with your design and logo and everything and this is what's happening here okay also I created some cubes in here to trying to creating some depth in the view and this is what's currently having this is just a default cubes nothing fancy I just drop in there simply because I'm going to use the depth of view on my camera all these details are going to be a little bit blurred because the depth of view function so I'm going to select my camera and down here you see uh, the settings if I'm click depth of view you see there's everything as a lot of stuff in being blurred out you can definitely change the f-stop to make a little bit sharper. If you go up, it's going to make a look a little bit sharper on the blurry side, but you can just find the, the way that you want to go. But if you really wanted to make it look like a camera stuff, you can just 32. I think that's the highest usually we can go. Uh, but 
have a little bit shallow depth view, but this is the whole idea is having this logo design. And you can see here the, the, the light in here. If I'm going to the material preview, you see we have two lights over here. I'm just getting get a rim light, it's creating some color in here in the background. So you see I'm adding some color because one of the red color is for my brand. And this is the main color I use. The textures is the lighting textures is always the one I've been mentioning million times in my tutorials. And you will see the links in the right corner and then you can watch how to creating these. That's just my default light for a lot of my scenes rather than the default light from the blender. Okay. So this is everything I want to share in this video. I hope you enjoyed this process to converting a actual well-designed logo from Illustrator directly into a blender to creating 3D render out of it. If you're one of my Patreon, you will be able to access this blender file and have some time to play with it. And thank you for your support for this channel. In the next video, I'm going to show you the story behind this logo and why I creating this and how to collaborating with professional logo designer to get the result that you want for your business. All right. Thank you so much for watching and please hit likes and share and comments. And if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribe my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.